Hey, welcome back to Not a Sermon, Just a Thought. Uh, years ago, I read a quote, um, questions are more transformative than answers. So I thought it would be interesting if we just put some questions out there, 21 of them, in fact. And to tell you the truth, they're a little uncomfortable. Here we go. If you substituted Biden for Trump and Trump for Biden in every news story and social media post so that everything that had been said and written about the one was suddenly applied to the other, would you still vote the same way? If your side got to decide what is moral and immoral, right and wrong, would you still be terrified of people who impose their views on others? Are we really less puritanical than we used to be? Or have we simply recalibrated the moral outrage scale so that what used to be accepted is now offensive and what used to be offensive is now accepted? Who gave us the authority to do that? If you can tolerate everyone but the intolerant, how do you define tolerance? Isn't the statement, there is no such thing as objective truth, an objective truth claim? At what point does a female fetus gain the right to control what happens to her own body? Does your definition of pro-life include being as concerned about the welfare and education of a seven-year-old as it is about protecting the life of an unborn child? Do you think it's fair when those who disagree with you take the most poorly formulated expression of your point of view and use it to disqualify your entire position? Do you ever do that to those with whom you disagree? Have you actually read the other side's platform or only what those on your side say? about the other side's platform. If Paul urged his readers to pray for an atheistic, despotic, misogynistic imperialist, what excuse do we have for not praying for our leaders, whomever they may be? Who are the lepers Jesus would touch today? Who are the sinners he would welcome? To whom would Jesus say, go and sin no more today? And did your answer to the previous two questions make you uncomfortable? If first century Christianity flourished in an extremely hostile political, social, and cultural environment, why are we Christians so anxious? Is there anything you can do to make God love you more? then why are you not grateful? Is there anything you can do to make God love you less? Then why are you so afraid? Is it more important to have the right answers or to ask the right questions? It's not a sermon. It's just a thought.